brothers and sisters. So today we're going to uh, have some deep teaching. Uh, we're going to read about where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And there's a dual meaning there. And so we'll look at that. And if you brought your Bibles today, please open them to the book of John chapter 13. We'll start reading verse 7. So Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. And that's what I'm going to do is explain a little deeper understanding of him washing their feet after we read the scriptures. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. And Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who is bathed needs only to wash his feet but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean, not all of them. See, brothers and sisters. So, to get a deeper understanding, we need to read another passage. So follow me over to the book of Luke, chapter 14, and we'll start reading at verse 27, and this is Jesus talking. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intend to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost? whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who sees it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Okay? So the disciples, when they knew Jesus personally, walked with him, knew him. He taught them right from wrong, obedience, righteousness, love. Okay? They were partially clean. But then Jesus washed their feet to make them completely clean. You see, when you become a Christian, you... Believe that Jesus, that God Almighty, sent His only begotten Son to come incarnated in human form to die of a crucifixion, be the sacrificial lamb for you and me, pay the penalty for you and me, and was buried and arose. We're partially clean. We say the Lord's Prayer and ask God to come in our heart. We tell him that we believe and we love him. Right? We ask for the Holy Spirit. We are partially clean. We don't get thoroughly and completely clean until we get filled with that Holy Spirit. And then we're sealed for the day of redemption. Right? Written in the book of life. Yes. And washed with the blood of Jesus. Completely. You understand? So the next step after believing and saying the Lord's Prayer, right? You've, you've started your foundation. You've built the foundation. But you have to have enough to finish the project, to finish the building, right? And the way you do that is repentance. The Lord says he wishes no one to perish but to come unto repentance. 
In Acts 2.38, it says, the word says, to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not His, and you will not. On the day of redemption, be part of those people that have eternal salvation and live forever and ever with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Do you understand? So it's imperative that you give your life to Jesus, all of your life. Don't hold back that one sin. It will keep you from receiving the Holy Spirit. Right? Not everyone receives the Holy Spirit at the same time. When Jesus goes to be with the Lord, he tells them to wait, to wait for the Comforter to come. They go in an upper room, the disciples, and the ones that loved him. And they pray and they fast together. Some people think it's 11 days. Some people think it's 7 days. But whatever it is, then the Holy Spirit comes in the room and fills them all with the Holy Spirit. There's others that disciples go and bring people to Christ and they baptize them in the name of Jesus, which is what you need. But then, when other apostles go to to be with them and minister to them. They had not even heard of what the Holy Spirit was or even heard of it. They had not received it. And then afterwards, they received the Holy Spirit. It is imperative that you repent to receive the Holy Spirit. Repentance means to turn from your sinful ways. You have to make a good faith effort. Right? Right? Good diligence is to make a good effort to change from your sinful ways, to renew that carnal mind of yours by getting rid of evil company, anything that causes you to sin, right? If watching HBO on TV, get rid of it. I don't have it. I get I, anything that causes you to sin. Going down a street where there's prostitutes and you can't do that without stopping and picking up a prostitute, don't go down that street. So make a good effort. And once you do, God promises that he will renew your mind completely. Take that carnal mind out of you. Take that sinful, worldly spirit out of you and fill you with the Holy Spirit. And renew that stony heart into a flesh, pure, loving heart. Lord says, if you do not have a pure heart, you will not see God. And the only way to have a pure heart, brothers and sisters, is to have Jesus in you. That's love. There's no greater love. Amen? Amen. So it's important, brothers and sisters. So if you have started that house but not finished it, you need to. And if you've been the prodigal son or daughter and you've just gone back to sinning the way you were before you were saved, right? Scripture says if you willfully sin after you've received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Well, brothers and sisters, the sacrifice was Jesus dying for you, taking the penalty. Without that, you don't get there, right? So if you have backslid to that point, come back. He will take you back like the, the prodigal son. But you have to know, brothers and sisters, it's not a microwave. You just don't say the prayer and boom, you get the Holy Spirit, right? Even from the beginning, you had to repent and show due diligence for him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, but you have to fight your way back if you have turned your back on him. You understand? But don't give up, because he will. He wishes no one to perish but to come on to repentance. 
Amen? Amen. But Jesus also tells us that unless you repent, you will all perish. So it's imperative, brothers and sisters. Make the decision today. If you are not saved or you have backslid, and if this is you, bow your heads right now and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. Please forgive me for my sins. And I believe that you sent your Son to die on a cross for me. And I thank you, Lord, for doing that. And I thank Jesus Yeshua, for being obedient unto death, for my sins. And I pray, Lord, that you help me renew my mind to get rid of this carnal mind and to repent from my ways. And I pray that you renew my mind completely Fill me with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And your will always be done, Father. And I pray this in the precious and holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, if you said that prayer. If you don't have a Bible, get one. And start reading it every day. Try to read a chapter every day. Put aside some time for him. Remember, he died for your sins. All he wants is a little time from you to hear his words. The only way we can know how to please God and do his will is to read the truth, the gospel. The whole New Testament is the gospel. And Jesus' gospel is the first four books in the New Testament. The whole Bible is complete. The Old Testament predicts Jesus coming and dying for you. The old law pointed us to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus leaves us with two commandments. Love your Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, if you do this, all of the commandments are fulfilled. So if you love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you will worship no one or nothing but God Almighty. Amen? Amen. And if you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't steal from him. You won't strike him. You won't lie to him. You won't commit adultery with his wife. You won't kill him. You won't commit any of those horrible sins because you will love your neighbor as yourself. And when you're filled with Jesus, that is the love beyond love. Amen? Amen. And pray every day. Pray in the morning. Thank him for waking you up. Thank him for keeping evil from you throughout the night. Ask him to lead you out of temptation and to keep evil from you throughout the day. That covers everything. Rapes. Attacks, diseases, accidents. Just those words keep evil from me. Amen? Amen. And at night, get on your knees and pray. And ask Him to forgive you for the sins you did. And any sins you did that you didn't know were sins. Sometimes we can sin and not know it. You understand? Humble yourself to Him. And He will bless you. And bless you and bless you. And you bless Him by praising Him and giving Him glory. People that have the spirit of the world do not give glory to God. You give glory to God all the time. Praise Him. Give your testimony to people. Bring others to Christ, brothers and sisters. If you love them, you will want to save them too. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, remember to pray up every day and read up every day. And keep the love of Yeshua, Jesus, in your heart. And we'll all be with our Lord and Savior someday, forever and ever. Amen.